welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, and as always, I have a very special guest for you, Mo Ganget, who's a lawyer for Workers.com. He'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus Beyond TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both a national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. Like I said, I have a very special guest for you, Mr. Mo Gangit, who's a lawyer for Workers.com. He's with us here tonight in the hot seat. So welcome to the program. Hi, Lydia. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. It's great to have you here. You know what? It's law is such an important topic you know a lot of people could benefit especially our viewers with different things going on in the community I think it's important to have someone like yourself you know come on the show and give some insight especially where work relations are concerned I think it's definitely a hot topic uh, work relations are a hot topic I'll give you a good stat to start off Lydia one out of ten lawsuits filed in federal court is a worker suing his boss for an unpaid wage so this is a very prevalent thing um, Typically, what we're talking about when we talk about worker issues in New York City, you're really going to be looking at unpaid overtime. That's the big one. All right, so, right. so overtime, overtime. You, you heard about it. I'm sure you've heard about it. It's when you work more than 40 hours a week and you're not getting paid extra. So the law is if you work more than 40, you have to get time and a half. But a lot of employers don't like to pay that time and a half. And they think they can get away with it, but that's where we come in. So what about... Because I remember, I think it was either 2016 going into 2017, and there was, because uh, even at my day job, you know, they gave us a login system where you have to track your hours. So you, you got to kind of, by the end of a two-week period, you submit your hours. So, so that's a great question. And when you're talking about unpaid wages, tracking hours is a big issue. And I'll tell you right off the bat that if your job is actually tracking your hours, they're probably doing pretty good. So usually we see a lot of cases where jobs don't even track hours. And in a, in a, in a common case, what you're going to have is a situation where nobody's keeping track of hours. People just give you $50 a day and say, take that, go home and be happy. And if you actually sit and you do the math and you look at how much time you spend at that job every day, mm -hmm. you could be making less than five bucks an hour. Oh, absolutely. But even like I, I, I know so many people where this happens to, again, they're not tracking your hours in the sense where you log in and you put your own hours in. Right. But it's understood that they're not going to give you the overtime. Ooh. Well, you know, for me, I'm dumbfounded when I hear that because I don't know what people are thinking. I mean, you can just do a simple Google search and you'll see a long line of employers notable employers, big right. companies yes. that get caught for this stuff, they end up paying. Let me explain to you a little bit about what they end up paying. So you've highlighted a situation mm -hmm. of what people do. That I've witnessed. That I've you've witnessed. Yes. Now, I bet you'd be surprised to hear this. Let's say that you were working 10 overtime hours a week, okay? And you should have gotten paid 100 bucks extra in overtime, but you never got it. Well, when that claim goes to a court, that $100 rises exponentially. And so an employer who really only had to pay you $100 is now going to be facing penalties, interest, attorney's fees. Listen, I'm not kidding when I tell you that the number gets very big very quickly. And so, you know, I'm dumbfounded. I don't get it. I don't understand why the employers don't just spend a little money, get a little legal advice, learn what the rules are, and pay people right. Because we're going to find you. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Now, what if they're asking the employees to, let's say you're uh, 9.30 to 5.30, but you really do till 7 p.m. every day? That's, that's, we hear that all the time. We hear it all the time. That my shift is 5.30, but when I'm done with the shift, i got to wait and refill the salt and pepper shakers. Or sometimes, you know, I'm done with the shift, but I got to... I got to do a quick little delivery. And my boss says, hey, on your way home, why don't you just do this one last delivery? Well, all that time counts, ladies and gentlemen. If they're making you work and you're spending time in the service of the job, 
you got to get paid for it. And I'll tell you something, you know, those little minutes, they can really add up. Absolutely. You can go back six years for unpaid wages. Now, if you're talking about a couple minutes a day, but you're talking about every day for six years, plus remember those penalties and that interest I was talking about, I mean, you could be sitting there thinking that you got, you know, a small claim, but it could actually be quite large. Now, how long does it take realistically when you file a claim to actually get through? Because we know court systems are bogged down. They're very, very backed up. Yeah. You could file a claim. It could, I mean, even you see it all the time with, like, injury cases. They take a year, two years, three years before you, you get any results sometimes. That's probably a question we get all the time. Or the first question we get, hey, when can I get this money that you think that I'm owed? Um, what, I, what I have to say is I can't give you an answer exactly because it can really be something as quick as a day where I meet someone, I hear their story, I will get a letter out or a fax or maybe just a phone call to their employer, and their employer will immediately recognize that they just made a mistake and they want to settle and get on with their life. Other employers can be a little more tricky, and they like to lawyer up, or they like to pretend like they don't have any money and they can't pay you, and they make you chase them. Interesting point there. You'll recall the example that I gave you before of, let's say you're owed $100 in unpaid mm -hmm. overtime, and you get the penalties, and you get the interest, and one other piece of it is you get an attorney's fee. So what the law says is that if you're a victim of what they call wage theft, then part of the penalties that are owed to you is the money that you incur hiring a lawyer to bring a claim to get relief for that wage theft. That you were owed in the first place. That you were owed in the first place. So, so when you talk about an employer who's taking a lot of time to pay and makes you chase him, what's really happening there is your lawyer, me, at LawyerForWorkers.com, I'm having to spend more time chasing him, and I'm incurring more fees because mm -hmm. we don't work for free. But we don't take that out of your $100, and we don't take that out of your penalties, and we don't take that out of your interest. That's the worker's money. The worker has earned that money, and he's owed that money. So when we make a claim on behalf of a worker, the more that we have to chase that employer, the more money we demand. Got it. So that $100, you know, I and we've had cases where we're only chasing like $100 in wages, but we got a real knucklehead of an employer, someone who doesn't want to see the writing on the wall. And so we'll actually get more in attorney's fees than we will in the wages and the penalties and the interest. And employers can't believe it. They go, wait, what do you mean I got to pay $10,000 in attorney's fees? I thought the total claim was only 2000 Yeah, but you didn't pay it when we told you to pay it. Now it's been six months, you know, I've had to take cabs to court, you know, I've had to file transcripts and, and deposition expenses and so all that, all that, all that, yeah, it's, it's a big consideration that employers, you know, they just don't take into account. But it's good for us and it's good for the workers, so I'm not complaining. So basically, just so the viewers at home would know, you're paid at the end. So we don't charge. Um, we don't charge any fees for our work. Uh, uh, basically, the way that the law is set up, it's, you know, a worker can't afford an attorney by the hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're making minimum wage, or in this case, you're not even making minimum wage. You're not getting paid overtime. How are you going to hire an attorney to go bring a lawsuit? Well, hold that thought. We're going to pick that up in just a second. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. On Focus TV, I'm Lydia Patel. So, Mo, right before we took the break, a lot is such an interesting topic because I know many people are probably experiencing this. Um, especially, like, the, what are the more common sectors that you would say go through this? Delivery men, right? 
you get a you get a delivery guy and he doesn't get to keep all his credit card tips mm -hmm. or they charge a delivery fee and they don't give it to the delivery man yeah. they keep it so the delivery man goes to the house and you know he's delivering the package and he's running up to the fifth floor not making you come downstairs and he's expecting a tip but you say no i already gave a delivery charge you think it might go to him but it doesn't waitresses uh convenience store workers uh fast food Dunkin' Donuts is the number one most sued... Violations, right? For vi Dunkin' Donuts, yeah. And that's because, you know, Dunkin' Donuts is owned by a lot of single franchise. Mm -hmm. They just have the one store. Um, they don't necessarily run it at, like, a professional corporation. So, so fast food is another big one. Construction. Really? Security guards. Parking lot attendants. I could go on. I don't know how much time we have. I but, I mean, that. you name it. If you're getting paid hourly... And quite frankly, if you're just not making a lot of money, you're what we call a low wage earner. Yeah. You, you're 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 the target, and it doesn't it doesn't make intuitive sense. You would think that you're paying these people eight bucks an hour, just bump them up a little bit more to the legal level. It's another four dollars. I'm sorry, five dollars minimum wage right now in New York. Thirteen. Right? Up to thirteen, but no, people want to they want to squeeze pennies out of the out of out of our lowest you know, category of earners. So it's it's widespread and, and there's just so many categories. Absolutely. So what about salary people? Well salary is another area where we see a lot of violations. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's probably some people watching right now thinking that none of this applies to them because they get salary and they don't get a wage. But they'll be shocked to learn that a lot of employers put you on salary just so they could take advantage of your time. Absolutely. Whether you do 40 hours or 80 hours, it's basically the mentality to get the job done. Exactly. And so what I recommend anybody who's on salary is to call us if they think they might not be getting paid enough for their time. Just think about it like this. First off, there's minimum salary requirements. So you should be, I think now in New York, it's almost $52,000 a year. If you're making less than $52,000 a year on salary, you need to go to lawyerforworkers.com or call me at 833-PAY-FAIR, okay? Y salary, like, just forget about it. Everybody thinks, oh, I'm on salary now. Count up your hours, okay? Are you making at least minimum wage and overtime? Are you making at least $52,000 a year? Are they making you work 70, 80 hours a week? Well, you might, you might have a big issue with salary. Salary, unfortunately, I can't give people the simple, quick and dirty analysis. See, with minimum wage and overtime, it's very easy. You count up all your hours, and you say, for the first 40, I got to get paid $13 an hour. And for every hour over 40, I got to get paid $19.50 an hour. So you can do that math. With salary, there are little nuances and complexities, so we always recommend that if, if you're on salary and you're working a lot of hours and not getting paid at least that 52000 give us a call. Wow. Yeah. That's really great information, and I know a lot of people could benefit from that because this, there's a lot of people who are not earning that 52000 mark. Yeah, listen, I'm here to educate but also to advertise my services, mm -hmm. and, and I'll tell you right now, that there's people watching this show right now who are owed quite possibly six figures in unpaid wages because they are a assistant at a medical office and really they spend 80 90 hours not being a medical assistant but just doing everything the doctor needs and you know he's a doctor and he's a nice guy and it's nice to work in a doctor's office but are they paying you below legal wages you got to ask yourself that's very, very true and i would l encourage everyone at home to really just look into that and like you said if you think or that's a good mark you know 52 is a good mark if you know you're being paid below that um that's something to consider reaching out to you for now what are some of the repercussions what if you still want to be employed can you still do a claim and still keep good ties with staying there Sure, and, and we have that conversation with every one of our clients because it's a question every one of our clients has.